Welcome to my new video series for chess.com, which is going to present some of the most important games in chess history. We are going to start with the first game ever to be recorded with the modern rules of chess. Now you know that chess is an ancient game. It had taken several centuries until the modern version that we play nowadays was defined. Most of these rule changes happened in the Middle Ages. And in particular, there were two pieces that used to move differently and used to have less power. These were the bishop and the queen. The queen used to be one of the weakest pieces on the board. Did you know that? The game we are going to look at is from 1475, played between Francesco de Castelvi and Narciso Vinales. Actually, it is a composition and part of a poem. Luckily for us, because it must be the reason why it was recorded and survived over 500 years, so that now, today, we can study it as well. And this is the first game where the bishop and the queen will move according to the rules that we know nowadays. Let's check it out. It started out with e4, d5. Yes, the Scandinavian defense. Hello to every fan out there who loves this opening so much. Your opening is perhaps the oldest ever recorded, sure. E takes d5, queen takes d5. Black is already using the new rule, according to which the queen can move as many squares as it wanted. Knight c3 attacking the queen and the queen draws back to d8. Bishop c4, a developing move. Attacking the f7 square, knight f6, natural development, as well as knight f3. After which, Black decided to pin this knight with bishop to g4, and let's pause for a moment. Danger. What would you play in this position with the white pieces? You can definitely pause the video if you want to. Otherwise, I will reveal it in 3, 2, 1. Bishop g4 is a blunder. It steps into knight e5, offering the queen, but if the queen is captured, bishop takes f7 is mate. Otherwise, both the f7 pawn and the g4 bishop are hanging. The only way to save the situation would be bishop to e6, but after bishop takes, f takes, this position looks pretty horrible for black already, and we have only made 7 moves. Another possibility after bishop g4, if you have thought about bishop takes f7, give a point to yourself as well, because this was the other brilliant solution. We sacrifice the bishop temporarily so that knight e5 is a check, wins the bishop back, so that when the king moves, whether it's king e8 or king g8, does not really matter. What we see on the board is that white is a pawn up and white's king is still safe while the black king cannot say the same. So bishop g4 was a blunder that happened in the game, but white did not see knight e5. I don't think we can blame them. This was a game that was played 500 years ago, over 500 years ago. So there will be errors in this game, but we should still just marvel at how the new power of the queen and the bishop will be shown in this game. Queen takes f3, attacking the b7 pawn and developing the queen. And this fact was basically looked over by black. He didn't care about queen takes b7. And so we captured a pawn. White is a pawn up and is attacking the rook in the corner. Of course, black could have played c6 or knight to c6 to prevent queen takes b7. But that would have been a different story, and maybe for artistic reasons, for the poem, it was actually better to play e6. Who knows? Queen takes b7, knight bd7, defending the rook, and now here comes another attacking move, knight b5, threatening knight takes c7, fork immediately, look at this aggressive play by white. Rook c8, defending the pawn, but here comes the second pawn that white captures, knight takes a7. The white is winning, this position is already quite an advantage for white, but what happens in this moment is that even though the rook is clearly hanging, black did not move it. Black goes knight to b6. I wonder why. 
once again, we will never know, but rook b8 would have been, of course, the most natural not to give up the rook. Knight b6, and obviously white captures the rook, the exchange that was sacrificed by black. And here comes a great move, d4, opening up the diagonal of the bishop and controlling the center. Why this pawn cannot be captured? Well, because the queen is overloaded, the queen has to be protecting the c8 knight. Queen takes d4, drops this piece. It's a very good move, d4, played in 1475. Knight to d6, attacking both the queen and the bishop. But once again, white finds a great way of escaping from this by giving a check on b5. Now either the king has to move, which is really ugly, or this bishop has to be taken. And that's what happened in the game. Knight takes b5, queen takes b5 check, and knight to d7. In this moment of the game, black is an exchange and two pawns down, so it's quite a desperate position. And yet, white plays a move that was not necessary, in a sense that it's the only move and the best move, but it's a very powerful move, and I'm impressed by this move. White's next move, d5. Opening up the position! Black's king is in the middle of the board, and white is opening up the position immediately. He could have simply developed the bishop, or move the king away. Let's talk about the king move later. Instead of that, he goes for d5 immediately. Very, very forcing and powerful play by white. e takes d5, and his plan was not to capture this pawn on d5. That would be moving the queen again. He's using his time to develop his pieces. Bishop to e3, very strong move. The pawn can be taken later. He's not in a rush. Bishop to d6, and now rook to d1 happened. And this is the point where I wanted to highlight that I believe that in this game, the rule of castling was still not defined. It was still not the rule for how the king can move. There were different rules about whether the king can move one square. Sometimes it was also applied that it could jump. But the rule of castling, which occurred, as I mentioned, also approximately at this time, but I believe somewhat later than this game, this is my theory, of course, but I think that rook d1 was played because there was no castling at this point. If there was castling, castle queenside would have been a more natural move. You place your king in safety, and at the same time you get your rook to the d5. That's what white wanted. So yes, castling queenside would have been a more logical move, but we cannot confirm it, we just believe that there was no castling at this point. That was the only difference between how chess is played nowadays and how it was played during this game. Rook to d1, queen f6. Black is trying to activate his pieces as well, even though quite a desperate position. Rook takes d5, bringing the rook and grabbing this pawn on d5 after queen g6, attacking both the g2 and the c2 pawns. This threat was basically ignored by white, and he goes for a very tricky move, bishop to f4. Like, what? Black falls for the trap. He takes the bishop. And after bishop takes f4, queen takes d7, king f8, and queen d8 is mate. That's how the game ended. Of course, bishop f4... It's nice if it's taken, but there was no need for black to capture this piece. In fact, he could have given a check on e4, and I wonder what white was planning against this move, queen e4 check, attacking the bishop now with the queen. So if you drop back to e3, then there's no threat of bishop takes d6 anymore. Of course, the position is still winning for white, but it didn't work out as White wanted. He wanted the bishop to be deflected from the d6 square. So queen e4 would have been a better move. And if we think of the game as a game where you could not castle, I think that instead of bishop f4, an interesting move for white would have been king to d1. <laughs> I'm trying to think as a person who lived in the 15th century. King to d1, 
and I want to bring my rook to the e5 so that I can bring the last piece to the attack and win the game. All in all, this game has showed us the power of the queen and the bishop too, but mainly the queen and how it changed drastically the pace of the game. It was only 21 moves and we see mate on the board thanks to the power, the new power of the queen. Our next game will present the modern rules as we know now with castling included and will highlight how cool it is to castle when the opponent's king is in the middle of the board. I will see you in the next clip.